All right, and you go to Esther chapter 4, 14. In the book of Esther, we're in a rough time right now, you'll remember. Uh, what happened last week? Haman convinced the king to write a law saying December 13th, we kill all the Jews in the kingdom. And the king signs it. Signs it. I mean, he said there's a certain people that, uh, and I won't mention them as certain people, but it's a certain people that you have spread throughout your kingdom, and that uh, they don't think like we think, they don't act like we act, and uh, I hear tell that they really don't even want to worship you. Oh, well, what do you suggest? I suggest we get rid of them all. All right, he's probably thinking a couple of people. I don't think the king is consciously aware that he's talking about an entire nation. Because remember, this king has backed already the movement and the development back there. He's the one who said to Nehemiah, go on home and take care of your dad. And here, I'll give you a small army to protect you. I'll even give you some money. In fact, I'll even have the country take up an offering for you. So, to see how, how smart Haman is, he doesn't mention the people. Because the king has already sort of shown some favor. In fact, in uh, history tells us that the Jews were highly placed throughout the kingdom because they were excellent bookkeepers. Jews had a history of being well educated. Uh, they taught their children very young, uh, reading, writing, math. These were things that were ingrained into these Jewish children. And so the king found a lot of advantage in hiring these educated people throughout the kingdom. So again, Haman doesn't mention the people group. Just that there are certain people. And there's always certain people everybody would like to get rid of. You know? I mean, I'm sure if you go to work and you say, hey, are there certain people you'd like to get rid of? People at work would probably hint around not letting you know that it's really you that they want to get rid of. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but they would probably agree with you. Oh, sure, there are certain people that we would like to get rid of. There's always certain people. And so he says to the king, there are certain people that just don't fit in. The king said, well, they don't fit in. Let's get rid of them. What do you want to do? Well, let's tell you, uh, how about December? Let's give them some time. And, you know, because all the people, we have to find out who these people are, we have to find out where they live, and then we have to make sure that our people have enough time to buy weapons and stuff. So we'll set this a whole year, because remember now, this is going on in January. And so they set, in January, they set December 13th as the day they'll carry out the execution. Not a good thing. So as you can imagine, there is a wee bit of trouble back at home. Now, Mordecai is really the instigator of all this because, remember, Mordecai didn't want to bow down to Haman. Haman is second to the king only. And the king said, everybody will bow down to Haman when you see them. And Mordecai said, I can't. We Jews don't bow down to anybody but God. Because bowing down, it wasn't just a kind curtsy like this. It represented a worship of this man. Just as the king expected you to worship him. Naaman wanted to, or rather Haman wanted to be worshipped, and he couldn't. If, now here's, here, here's the thing, of course, Esther has to come into this at some point in time, and Remember, Esther is the niece of Mordecai. Mordecai is her uncle. Mordecai was the one when the king was walking around saying, gee, I think I need another queen, remember? He was there. He ran home and said, hey, get yourself all dolled up. I'm taking you out. So she gets all prettied up. He takes her out, introduces her to the man in charge of the harem. He looks at her and says, wow, gee, some tomato." All right, so they sent her to Meta school for a whole year, six months learning makeup, six months learning how to be polite and all that kind of stuff. At the end of the year, they bring her before the king, and they said, of all these dames, go to my tomato. And of course, who did the king go with? Yeah, let's go with the tomato, right? And so sure enough, the king picks up Esther. 
which just so happens to be my mother-in-law's last name. <laughs> so it all fits here, right? So now we're in it. But as you can imagine, your husband has just signed a law saying that you and your people are open season. But not till December. Mordecai comes to her with this idea right here. You've got to go and talk to the king for us. I remember his last wife tried that and it didn't work real good. The last queen, she's no longer here. That's why I'm here now. Is there some personal risk here? Yes. Could it lead to death? Oh, sure. Even though you're his wife, you can't see. Remember, the king is God in his mind. So when you walk into the chamber, you stand there, and you wait for the king to extend his scepter. Not his hand, his scepter. He extends the scepter, you walk up and you put your hand on the scepter, and then he'll allow you to sit down or talk to you. If he doesn't extend the scepter, the guards will immediately arrest you and execute you. Okay. So that's your choice. Now, Mordecai says, we're in trouble. The king passed a law saying that we're all going to be executed come December 13th. You need to help us out. You need to fix this. Why me? If thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, you can be quiet. You don't have to do anything. See, God doesn't really require you to be involved in Christian service. He would like you to be involved in it. He's commanded us to. But the work can get done without us. Is what he said. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall there be enlargement and deliverance. That word enlargement here means a respite or relief. And deliverance shall arise to the Jews from another place. If you don't do this, don't worry. God's still going to deliver us because we're his chosen people. God has a reason for the Jew. So we'll be okay. Here's the bad part though. But you and your father's house, you'll be destroyed. You don't have to do it, but you're going to die. If you do it, you might die. If you don't, you'll surely die. So you have a choice. You can either be killed by God or you can be killed by the king. Which one would you rather be killed by? It's better to be, it's better to die in the doing of a good deed than in a bad. And if you don't say anything right now, that's bad. If you know, let's suppose I had a cure for cancer but just didn't tell anybody. It's my right. I came up with a cure. Who am I hurting by not giving it away? Everybody. Would you think if God gave me that kind of intelligence, if God gave me that gift, don't you think God wanted me to use it? And who knows? you got to underline that. Who knows? And this is part of what I'm going to share with you in just a minute. Who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Three simple points. First of all, what a grand faith this man had. Don't worry. It's going to, God's going to take care of us. He'll either take care of us through you or he'll find somebody else, but God's going to resolve this issue that much I know. Wow, what a faith. This man trusted and believed Mordecai, who started the whole problem, was never worried because he always knew God was going to make the deliverance. We are God's chosen people. God will not allow... Now remember, we're talking about the extinction, not just of the Jews living in this particular area, but we're talking about all the Jews in the world. Every Jew, everywhere, 
would be hunted down and killed on that one day. Which means we don't get this. Because guess what family he is? He's a Jew. Came from Jewish mama, came from a Jewish daddy. Well, not necessarily a Jewish daddy. But his mama had a Jewish daddy and a Jewish mama. And going way back, he knew from Genesis that there was a deliverer promised. He knew from the prophets preceding him, Isaiah, all those prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all of them had already written. Most of the Old Testament, by the time he comes on the scene, has already been written. Esther was one of the last books of the Old Testament. One of the last. So the Old Testament started there. All the promises about a Redeemer, all the promises that he will be born in Bethlehem, all the promises that he is going to be the Lamb slain, all those promises are already written. And they're all written that a Jewish kid's going to do it. So he's certain that the Bible will be fulfilled because God's word does not come back empty. So he says to his niece, God's going to take care of this. That much I know because God keeps his word. Now here's the deal. Do you want to be involved in this or not? Do you want God to use you or do you want God to use someone? If it's all the same, I'd rather God should use me from time to time. I don't want to look around and see that God's only used other people. Those of us who took part, for example, we sit here now on these nice colorful pews. We do it, and we're glad because we all took part. We all raised the money. We all watched my wife sing. Yeah, but we all had part in, 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 in the acquisition of what we now sit on. But suppose you did. Suppose you sat on your hands and said, well, the Lord will have to do it. I hope it gets done. No. God did it. We thought he would. And God did. Aren't you glad now that he did it through you or with you? It would have been done anyway because God had determined that we had ugly look at things and they needed to be reupholstered. I was quite certain that his house should look better than this. Aren't you glad that you had a part? Amen. So that we could say, look what God and I did together. <coughs> better than look what God and that people did. No, look what God and I have done. So he holds that out, but what a faith this man has. What a faith he has. That he says, God's going to take care of this with or without you. It makes good sense that it should be you. After all, you are the queen. Don't you think that God made you a Jewish queen in the Gentile kingdom for a reason? Whenever God gives us an appointment, uh, whether it's talent, now and my wife can sing and play instruments, why do they got that talent? Oh, just so that they can come along in the bathroom when they're at home. It's so that they can bring honor and glory to God. Mikey, who didn't use his voice for a long, long time, I'm sure glad he decided to use it now. God gave him that voice for a reason, to bring honor and glory to him. Now, they could have turned it down. They would pay a huge price if they did. But because they have used their talent, my wife and I have utilized our talents through the years, and the Lord blessed us by bringing our kids up behind us Amen. who have more talent than we got. So now they use that. So if God gave you a talent, he expects you to use it. This man. Now here's the thing. No one knows why God placed us where he does it first. We had no idea why God asked us to drive to this place on that particular Mother's Day. There are a lot of churches in town. A lot of big fancy churches we could have went to. I didn't know why God brought us here. 
but he laid it on my heart as I drove past this place, you know, back to work one day, to, hey, you know what? Mother's Day, I saw the little church. Oh, here we are. Did we know everything? No. Had no expectation. Did we think we would need... I remember when I met me your <laughs> many people. And at first it was like, well, uh, we don't have anybody to preach. How about you, and, and their first opportunity was, why don't you fill the pulpit for us until we hire someone? Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, you know, we saw your resume, and we think you'd be better as a principal of the school. Because we did, we had a lot of experience in it, right? And, uh, of course, forget the part that I was in two churches as well. But, uh, so if you would be so kind as to just fill the pulpit for us un until we can hire somebody. I don't care. I like preaching. I preach all the time. So, okay. And then, of course, they came back later and said, you know, we're tired of looking. Uh, will you just be our pastor? Sure. So it was slow. You know, when they said that, I just said, ah, no, I you don't want to waste my time. But I don't know why I'm brought to this particular place. But God knows. God knows. We don't know yet who God's going to bring into this church that's going to need us. We don't know that. We know who he has brought so far in our past, but we don't know yet what's tomorrow. We don't know what need there might be. Ricky Lambert. God brought him into our life. Did we know that? I didn't foresee his mother passing away, although you know we have you know those things that happen to us all the time. But I'm glad that we taught him the things that we taught him when we got him. And so, you know, we don't know why. And Esther, you know, but there should be some reasoning. Well, there must be a reason that I am the queen. There must be a reason that God gave me talent. There must be a reason that God gave me this particular job or this particular position. There must be a reason why God has allowed me to have this particular influence over these particular people. There must be a reason why God gave me this particular money. Surely he didn't want me to spend it all on myself. There's probably some need where even my money, my income, my tithe can bring honor and glory to God. And we have struggled hard in this church to allow our tithe to bring honor and glory. There's very, i got to tell you, there's very few churches that do as much with as little as we have done. You know, they were predicting our death years ago, and here we still are. Amen. Here we still are. Why? Because I think God placed us here for a reason. Amen. I really do. He didn't place us here to be the world's largest anything. He placed us here because he knows that we know how to love. We know how to care for folks. And there's going to come a time when people in need of love and care are going to find their way here. Yes. And we'll be ready for them. Yes. In prettier pews than we 